Yo, 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 what's good, world? Y'all already know what it is, man. It's your boy, Gio. Back with another one, man. This one right here, man, it's about your boy, Diddy, man. Just update about everything he got going on. It's crazy, man. It's like, it's like on a whole nother world, man. Crazy, like, you know, from the 120 people coming up and, like, 30 of them minors and, you know, the new judge, uh, his, denial, his, his bond getting denied, you know, 200 million to the tunnels they talking about, man, just, now they're talking about the tapes, they're saying they're selling the tapes, man, they gonna be selling these tapes that they got going out, they say Diddy, uh, allegedly was selling them on the black market for 500 million for each tape, so if you can imagine how many he got since he been recording, and what he would make on the black market, man, that's a killing, 500 million a pop, that's, that's unbelievable there, man, like, that's killer paper. Also, they were talking about how your boy Bywalk, man. He was six years old when he got taken out of his house. And he started rocking with, you know, Diddy and uh, Jermaine Dupree, man. And just that situation on that video was kind of crazy, man. And uh, y'all got to check that one out, man. Um, They were talking about also, you know, uh, his conditions and things and such. Uh, it don't look like it's going to get any better. Uh, he definitely need more security tighten up, I would say, just because of who he is and people that, you know, may be after him. But, um, you know, this is something that you need to check out, man. Gene Deal was talking about a whole bunch of things on this video, and a few people mentioned some stuff, man. Y'all got to check this out. Hit the comments, man. Let me know what y'all think about this whole situation, man. Appreciate the support and love as always, man. Run that subscribe button up, man. Subscribe, 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 man. Let's get it liked up, man. Let's get it. Let's run it up. Let's run it up, man. And uh, let's chat about this, man. Uh, till then, I'm out, man. We are following breaking news right now related to music mogul Sean Diddy Combs. Major new allegations today of sexual assault and exploitation by Combs. For the first time, we are hearing about victims who say they were minors when they were allegedly assaulted by the music star. The youngest allegedly just nine years old. So who knows what's going on? Upstairs in oh. the basement with the cameras. What's going on? There are indeed other perpetrators involved. They will be revealed when that particular individual case is ready to be filed. They already know who they are. And I'm talking here about not just the cowardly but complicit bystanders. That is, those people that we know watched this behavior occur and did nothing. And I'm talking about the people that participated, encouraged it, egged it on. They know who they are. Diddy might be getting jailed for life. According to the latest developments, Diddy didn't just have adults in his freak-offs. There were minions as well, and all of them are grown up now, ready to hold the former music mogul accountable for his actions. And honestly, it's about time because what Diddy did to these minions is straight up despicable. The youngest of them was only nine years old at the time of the incident. And get this, the feds are prepared to uncover even more disturbing details as they've got more than 3,000 victims lined up. What's more, thanks to the victims' testimonies, the feds now know for sure that there were other celebrities involved as well, and they're going to make sure they pay for helping Diddy with his depraved actions. Just what evidence did the Fed stumble on? And who are these other celebs involved? Here's everything we know. The biggest secret in the entertainment industry that really wasn't a secret at all has finally been revealed to the world. Diddy's minion mistreatment exposed. So turns out that Diddy really is the worst of them all. During a press conference held on October 1st, attorney Tony Busby, with co-counsel Andrew Van Arsdale by his side, turned a lot of heads with his shocking allegations against the former music mogul. Apparently, his law firm had been working to file a bunch of civil lawsuits against Combs with allegations, ranging from mistreatment, fraud, and battery, to incidents involving minions. And here's where things get really disturbing. Busby claimed that so far, his law firm had received calls from 3,000 than 285 people, all of whom were traumatized by Diddy at one point in their life. Now Busby's company did not turn these people away. Instead, they heard them out and have been able to verify the stories of 120 victims up until now, a number that's expected to go up in the future. 60 of these victims are men, whereas 60 of them are women, so it doesn't seem like Diddy had a preference. What's more, there had been a rumor about Diddy targeting black people in particular, but that doesn't seem to be the case. His actions affected all communities. 62% of the plaintiffs were African American, 30% were white, and and the remainder were Hispanic or Asian. These victims come from more than 25 different states. The majority of them are from California, New York, Georgia, and Florida. More importantly, according to Busby, these incidents spanned from 1991 to 2024. However, the part that has everyone sick to their stomach is this next one. Apparently, 25 of these victims were minions at the time of the incident.
I know you can hear me. I know you can feel me. Smelling numerous. Fresh mahogany. There are reports that P. Diddy's private jet is still active. Not only that, but it's active in a whole nother country. So the day after P. Diddy's private jet was spotted in the Auckland airport, it was also spotted in New Zealand. What's even weirder is no one can track the flight data on this jet, which is obvious because it's private, of course. But this poses a whole bunch of questions for me. One, is P. Diddy really in jail right now? I feel like the obvious answer would be yes, but would we be surprised if he wasn't? Is it possible that he's being snuck off to another country? And if so, will we ever be able to find out? Another question is, if that isn't Diddy on the private jet, then who is it on the private jet? And knowing Diddy's situation, why would they actively travel in the private jet? And there's a whole lot of artists that all of a sudden want to do tours in different countries and do tours all the way in the south and do tours all the way i just find this time very interesting but we'll stay locked in so a lot of people believe that diddy is the fall guy for this guy 92 year old clive davis now without going too deep into clive's background clive founded arista records in 1974 uh, and was responsible for launching careers of people like billy joel and janis joplin and carlos santana just to name a few he also came out as being bi in the 1980s, which I'll tell you why that's important in a moment. And there's a lot of rumors surrounding this guy, which we can get into in another video. But most importantly for this case, he was Diddy's mentor. At least that's how Diddy describes it. However, hip hop mogul Suge Knight has a different take on it. And if you don't know who Suge Knight is, Google him. He is not a man you want to mess with. So what happens is Suge walks into Jimmy Iovine's office at Interscope Records and hears something that he probably shouldn't have heard. And it went like this. And this next part is Suge's words. He said, I'm here because Clive Davis told me that him and Puffy's real tight and, uh, you know, lovers. So I thought he was talking like they got love for each other. I'm like, I, he said, nah, they are lovers, he continued. And I'm like, why do you keep saying that? I said, are they lovers like F and sucking? And he said, I don't want to say that, but that's what it means, right? Now, apparently that's something that Suge Knight was not supposed to talk about. But if you know anything about Suge Knight, he really doesn't care what people think. Anyways, like I've said before, this rabbit hole is getting deeper and deeper. There's so much more information to come out, so hit that follow button so you don't miss it. The FBI raided Will Smith's mansion this morning and made a chilling discovery. After an anonymous tip about something strange happening at the luxurious residence, an investigation team was sent to the location. Officers were greeted by Will Smith's butler, who appeared nervous and tried to prevent the police from entering. Growing suspicious, the police insisted and decided to conduct a thorough search of the property. Upon entering one of the lavish bedrooms, they noticed something odd. The floor beside a massive bed seemed to have been recently disturbed. One of the officers moved the bed, and that's when the incredible happened. Beneath the luxurious carpet, a hidden pattern passageway was revealed. Without a second thought, the officers descended into the opening, while Will, already handcuffed, cried out in desperation, begging them not to go. The tunnel was cold, damp, and the darkness seemed to swallow any trace of light. The walls were covered with markings that resembled ancient symbols, and the path was littered with strange objects, expensive clothes, accessories, and even piles of money scattered across the floor. The air grew heavy, and the sense of mystery engulfed everyone present. Despite the growing fear, the team ventured deeper until suddenly, the tunnel widened, revealing something completely unexpected that made everyone stop. But the most shocking part came after, as Will's revelation following his arrest left everyone in a state of disbelief. Click on the heart to see. Yeah, man. Uh, to think that Diddy was doing this even with security or, you know, just wildly, you know, going after people, man. Uh, he was doing crazy. it in front of the producers. He was doing it in front of the artists. He was doing it in front of certain people. See, Puff is like this. If you know, he know that you commit crimes, <laughs> he'll commit a crime with you or around you. But if he know you ain't going for, because there are people that was NYPD, there were people who were correction officers who worked as security for Bad Boy, and Puff would not, would dare not do nothing around them, as well as myself. He knew the people that he could do shit around, and he kept it business around those people. But people that worked for him, that were minions and stuff like that, he didn't give a But certain security wouldn't allow him to do certain things, even though they was working for Green Gate Security, 
that was a subsidiary of Bad Boy, those guys wasn't going to lose their pension for Puff. They would have checked them in a minute. I have my own tapes. I've seen what they do. The ritualistic behaviors. Putting girls in the suitcases. Dumping them in alleyways. It's... It's, it's horrifying. Every one knows. Jaguar Wright has recently made serious allegations against Diddy, claiming she has incriminating footage of him. She also mentioned disturbing stories from his parties, alleging that women were placed in suitcases and discarded. These claims add to the growing controversy surrounding Diddy, who has faced numerous accusations in the past. Wright's remarks have sparked further speculation and attention online although no concrete evidence has been provided to support her statements. As always, such claims should be approached with caution until more information is available. Every one knows. And every person that's sitting there trying to act surprised knows very well. Whispers are swirling that Jay-Z just might have made the ultimate power move to protect himself. Rumor has it he's cut a deal with authorities to avoid being dragged down alongside P. Diddy. As Diddy's empire crumbles under an avalanche of shocking allegations, all eyes are now on Jay, with insiders claiming he's quietly secured his own safety, even if it means turning his back on someone he once called a friend. Sources say Jay-Z has been keeping a low profile, strategically distancing himself from the chaos. But behind the scenes... It's rumored that Jay has been cooperating with investigators, ensuring he won't get pulled into the fallout that's wrecking Diddy's career. The question buzzing across social media and the industry alike, did Jay-Z cut a deal to save himself while Diddy takes the fall? For a man who's built his image as untouchable, these rumors could tarnish his legacy. Is this the ultimate play of self-preservation or just another wild conspiracy? With Diddy's world crumbling fast, Jay-Z's every move is being watched closely. What the hell is going on with Beyonce right now? She's siding with P. Diddy and even defending him. Everyone is unfollowing her on social media, and what she said will make you question her humility. She said, I don't understand why people are mad at Diddy. Diddy is an American hero. If you were at a Diddy party and something happened to you, that's on you because you chose to be there. Don't blame Diddy, blame yourself. Whoa, what the hell, girl? Diddy has had rumors surrounding him for 20 years. He's been doing this stuff for a long time no matter what if you think beyonce should be ashamed for saying this hit it's not the way i wanted to come on this live i'm tired i can't even fucking hide it i'm tired i woo do it there's somebody threatening us right now in a way that i'm just like you know what do it <laughs> Do it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do it. Do it. <laughs> you can't take any more that you have already fucking taken. So do it. <laughs> do it. Part 2, The Setup The partnership between Sean Diddy Combs and Diageo, once celebrated for its success with Ciroc Vodka and later Deleon Tequila, began to deteriorate after Diddy voiced concerns. Diddy voiced concerns about the unequal treatment of his brands. At first, the venture was lucrative, with Diddy helping Ciroc gain massive popularity, but behind the scenes, tension mounted. Diddy grew increasingly frustrated, claiming that Diageo was not giving his brands the same attention and resources it allocated to others, specifically George Clooney's Casamigos Tequila. Casamigos saw significant growth and investment. Diddy's grievances went beyond simple business disputes. He publicly accused Diageo of racial discrimination. He argued that Diageo had categorized De Leon as a black brand, limiting its appeal to only certain demographics instead of positioning it to compete globally. This labeling, he claimed, stifled the brand's growth potential and reflected deeper systemic issues within Diageo and the liquor industry at large. His accusations threatened not only Diageo's public image, but also the company's business practices, raising concerns about how minority-owned brands were managed within the industry. 
In response to what he saw as neglect and bias, Diddy sued Diageo in 2023, seeking justice for what he described as years of mistreatment. The lawsuit claimed that Diageo had focused its resources on brands like Casamigos, neglecting the brands that Diddy had helped build. His legal action was a high-profile move, attracting widespread media attention and putting Diageo under scrutiny. After months of legal battles, Diageo and Diddy reached a settlement. While the terms of the settlement remain undisclosed, it is reported that Diddy received a substantial sum of money. As part of the settlement, Diddy withdrew his allegations and lawsuits, and Diageo retained full ownership of both Ciroc and De Leon, ending their business relationship. I tell you this right now, y'all talking about free Britney. Y'all need to be doing a, a campaign that say free Beyonce. Uh, the Beyonce is free. She is a prisoner in a gilded cage. Oh, oh no. But I'll say, it, man. Yeah, Beyonce is on. She's been on them for a long time. And you keep her that way. So I'm hoping that in all this P. Diddy nonsense that we're going to finally find out what Solange Knowles was so mad at Jay-Z about in this elevator after the Met Gala in 2014. Because as you can see in that video, Beyonce just stood to the side while her sister took the stuffing out of Jay-Z. Then acting calm, cold, and professional as they exit at the hotel, Solange gets in the car and Jay-Z is blocked by security from getting in his vehicle. While Beyonce gets in the vehicle with her sister and he has to find his own ride. So Cat Williams and Solange have made it their personal mission to free Beyonce from Jay-Z's control. In fact, if it all goes according to plan, Jay might end up sharing a prison cell with Diddy. For years, there have been speculations about Bay being trapped in a loveless marriage. But according to Kat and Solange, it's far more sinister than anything fans could have ever imagined. According to them, Jay's got Bay hooked on illegal substances, and there are even reports about him forcing her into free offs. And if that sounds like Diddy, well, it's because Diddy was his right-hand man. But it's game over for Jay's little scheme now since Diddy's arrest puts him in danger as well. Just what did Kat Williams and Solange reveal. Is Bay really trapped? And what exactly was Diddy's role in Jay's control over Beyonce? Here's everything we know. So yeah, between that and P. Diddy's close friendship with Jay-Z, I'm wondering what all is going to be revealed in this trial. Beyonce and Jay-Z's weird relationship. So Jay-Z and Beyonce have been hailed as a power couple for years now. These two have everything, money, power, and fame. But a healthy relationship? Well, that's the one box they don't check off. I think Diddy done fucked everybody. Literally. Mm. I think he done fucked everybody. 20, I think over 20 CEOs have stepped down. Kevin Lyles from 300. The Nike CEO stepped down. The feds, you feel like the that's feds a red, know what they got. You feel like that's a red flag? Yep. Yeah, the feds or is know what a they got. It, or is this a coincidence? Uh, I don't believe in coincidences. Yeah, I don't believe in coincidences. Yeah, no, I don't believe in coincidence. What do you think is going to happen? Do you, what, like, what's your prediction on what's going to happen? Uh, I think I think they they're going after his assets. Yeah, I think they're going out after his assets. Uh, it's kind of hard to predict what's going to happen, homie. Uh, another black man go to jail. And this, okay, so do you think this is the end of the celebrity? Do you feel like celebrities are aren't what they used to be? People are going to realize what goes on. Do you feel like uh, how people go ahead? How we praise celebrities and and how, how you used to say rappers aren't what well, rappers aren't what they used to be. Everyone's focused on what's what other celebrities were involved. Um, you know, who's going to be named, who's going to be outed. I'm hoping to file some lawsuits this week that we make sure that we've done our homework because it's going to create a firestorm. We understand that. Latest news from TMZ Live program. Lawyer Tony Busby said that many celebrities involved in the Didi case will be prosecuted for allegedly helping him commit and cover up crimes unless they settle out of court first. A request letter has been sent to these celebrities, giving them the opportunity to pay a large amount of fees to settle and avoid public litigation. So far, some celebrities have taken action for this. If you were attending one of these parties, if you will, and you attended attended before or you knew what was going to happen, that is, um, you knew that a particular drug was being used in drinks that was causing people to be coerced and taken advantage of, and you were there in the room or you participated or you watched it happen and didn't say anything or you helped cover it up, uh, in my view, you have a problem. We're going to file public lawsuits and pursue these cases aggressively.
Busby said that anyone suspected of being involved in Dee Dee's crimes should be held responsible, and the first batch of lawsuits will be filed this week. The Diddy case. This is book that came out of his wife, Kim Porter. She released a book. She says how he had to do certain things to stay on a certain level. Every major person you know have been to his party. They're starting to release photos of Aaliyah was at the party. Huh? Why you think ain't nobody saying nothing? They're not bashing him. These allegations have always been there. They've been ignoring this, turning the blinds out forever. That's why I came attacking the industry, the culture, the community. Man, it's been five years and it unfolded. And there's still no pushback against Puffy. Nigga, they were still rocking with Puffy. Think about Michelle Obama, Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama. Remember, Puffy was with them with the rock to vote. All of this have always hovered over Puffy's head as a dark cloud. And they know this to be true. But nigga, they turned a the blind eye. Man, the white boy always find them a good nigga, like Puffy. They use them kind of niggas to find them niggas out of our culture in the industry to go recruit the niggas and the girls that's down with the freaking. Everybody was down with the freaking. Puffy just the fall guy. You know how many people shaking in their booths that's on them tape? It's no different than Jeffrey Epstein's island list. Isn't it ironic that they give us all the details about Puffy and then give us no details about Jeffrey Epstein? I just want to remind people, as humble and righteous you think your favorite celebrity is, they exist in an evil world. And for them to maintain in that world, they have to be okay with evil things. Religious people have always said, Evil exists in high places, huh? So the Face Records was formed by Babyface and L.A. Reed, which Clive Davis joined them for a joint venture deal, right? So they was all signed under Artista Records. So as you see here, Davis made his agreement with L.A. Reed and Babyface to form the Face Records in October 1989. So Chili ended up replacing Crystal. They ended up signing a deal with Pebbles for eight albums. Pebbles found them TLC a deal with LaFace Records' L.A. Reed, which is her husband. So these are all the artists associated with LaFace Records. As you see, you got Usher, Tony Braxton, TLC, of course, Outkast, the list goes on and on. Um, Big Boy, Alicia Keys, uh, as you see. Let's take a second to look here. So Clive is a vet in this game. He's not somebody you can like play with. You feel me? His connections reach to damn the moon. You feel me? His connections reach to the sun. So he was born in New York, Brooklyn to a Jewish family, Herman and Florence Davis. His father was an electrician and a salesman. Davis was raised in Crown Heights, Brooklyn and attended Erasmus Hall High School. As you see, from 1967 to 1973, Davis was the president of Columbia Records. He was founder and president of Artista Records from 1974 through 2000 until founding J Records. From 2002 until 2008, he was chair and CEO of the RCA Music Group. And that includes RCA Records, J Records, Artista Records, and he was a chair and CEO of J Records, chair and CEO of BMG North America. So Davis was hired as an assistant counsel of CBS subsidiary um, at age 28. He then moved up quickly as part of a re, uh, well, reorganization of Columbia Records Group. So he was appointed as an administrative vice president and general manager for who? Columbia Records. Wow. So he moved up pretty quick, as you see. The next year, Davis was appointed president and became interested in the newest generation of rock and roll. In 1972, he signed Earth, Wind and Fire to Columbia Records, and that's what really put him on the map. Clive ended up becoming a chief creative officer at Sony Music Entertainment after he sold his shares to Sony, basically, and then Yamin you know I mean, got under their umbrella, which he holds today. All the artists associated with Clive Davis and Artista Records. You see Diddy here, Jermaine Dupree, L.A. Reid, LaFace, you know what I mean? Babyface right there. You feel me? Tony Braxton, TLC, which is under LaFace. You know I mean, Usher. Yeah. This is Clive Davis's list. Uh, Left Eye, Alicia Keys, everybody. This is who 
Clive Davis has had, like, I guess, um, associations with Prince, Jay-Z, everybody. All right, so we got this contract situation down packed, right? Okay, cool. Now let's get to TLC. Chili fit in perfectly, right? So she was the dancer of the group. So Rosanda, what the hell? Thomas, born February 27th, 1971. So Chili started off as a backup dancer for Damien Dane before she transferred to TLC. He Boz was the vocalist because she had a, like a unique voice. Left Eye was the style, the culture, the lyrics, the, the songs, you feel me? Left Eye was the group. Beautiful, talented, could sing, could model, could rap. You name it, she reminded me so much of Aaliyah. Just the hip hop version, you feel me? She impacted, influenced the game from day one. The debut album was chiefly written by Dallas Austin and Lisa Lopez, right? Left Eye. These are only some of the songs that she wrote. But as you see, Waterfalls, you see No Scrubs, you see stuff that are classics that she wrote, pen and pad. You We'll get into more of that later on, as you know. But this is just to sum up where her head was at. You feel me? Like, artist-wise. She wasn't nobody you can compare to. So their debut album, Ooh, on the TLC tip, was released 1992 of February 25th. They actually had a few uh, artists, producers, help them work on that. Like, as you see, Jermaine Dupri, Dallas Austin. Their debut album peaked at number 14 on the U.S. Billboard 200 and has been certified quadruple platinum. Now, they were on top of the world, right, at an early age, found early success. You feel me? Some success people wish to have, and they did it like that. Now, being in that position can cause a lot of unwanted attention as well, which left eye wasn't too fond of no wonder jaguar right dared to risk her life to go against beyonce she has three advantages that make jay-z afraid to step up and clear the air recently jaguar right publicly exposed jay-z and beyonce alleged crimes revealing on a tv show that Jay-Z and Beyonce might be involved in murder. She also mentioned their connection to Diddy, stating that Diddy and Jay-Z are equally guilty, but Jay-Z is using Diddy as a scapegoat. He even funded the investigation against Diddy. After revealing all this, Wright doesn't seem to fear any retaliation from Jay-Z, likely because of three key advantages. First, Jaguar Wright has a clean record. This international singer and songwriter is known as a highly upright individual. If Jay-Z were to try and discredit her, he wouldn't have any dirt to use against her. Second, she's discussing these matters on TV. Wright chose to go public on television as a form of self-protection. If anything happens to her, everyone will immediately point fingers at Jay-Z and Beyonce. Third, they've never sued her, and she hasn't received any legal notices. Looking at their history, whether it's rumors or copyright issues, Jay-Z has frequently initiated lawsuits, but this time, he's chosen to stay silent. The FBI raided Will Smith's mansion this morning and made a chilling discovery. After an anonymous tip about something strange happening at the luxurious residence, an investigation team was sent to the location. Officers were greeted by Will Smith's butler, who appeared nervous and tried to prevent the police from entering. Growing suspicious, the police insisted and decided to conduct a thorough search of the property. Upon entering one of the lavish bedrooms, they noticed something odd. The floor beside a massive bed seemed to have been recently disturbed. One of the officers moved the bed, and that's when the incredible happened. Beneath the luxurious carpet, a hidden pass passageway was revealed. Without a second thought, the officers descended into the opening, while Will, already handcuffed, cried out in desperation, begging them not to go. The tunnel was cold, damp, and the darkness seemed to swallow any trace of light. The walls were covered with markings that resembled ancient symbols, and the path was littered with strange objects, expensive clothes, accessories, and even piles of money scattered across the floor. The air grew heavy, and the sense of mystery engulfed everyone present. Despite the growing fear, the team ventured deeper until suddenly, the tunnel widened, revealing something completely unexpected that made everyone stop, but the most shocking part came after, as Will's revelation following his arrest left everyone in a state of disbelief. Click on the heart to see. Major celebrities allegedly involved with Sean Diddy Combs' sex crimes are said to have quietly reached settlements already. Attorney Tony Busby says that he plans to sue several A-listers who allegedly helped Diddy cover up his sexual abuse, but he claimed some of the stars have already paid up in an attempt to keep their identities private. 
He told TMZ, quote, if you were attending one of these parties and you were there in the room or you participated or you watched it happen and didn't say anything or you helped cover it up, in my view, you have a problem. Tony says that he is planning on aggressively pursuing legal action against certain celebrities and that names will come out in due course. He has reportedly already sent out letters of demand to VIPs who are accused of being involved in assaults that occurred at the rappers' parties. He told the outlet, quote, We collect our data, collect our evidence, do our due diligence, spend time with the victim, and then because it's in the best interest of the victim, we attempt to resolve these matters without the filing of a public lawsuit, and we have done that already. Tony is representing 120 victims and states that he has fielded thousands of calls from people claiming to be victims of an assault by Diddy. According to a new allegation, Donald Trump, former president of the United States, Republican nominee for president currently, was in fact at P. Diddy's freak-off parties. Let's put it up full mass. Now, once again, this is currently an allegation, but according to the new allegations, Former President Donald J. Trump has been linked to Sean Diddy Combs and his wild, infamous parties. The claims come from Adria, Sherry English, an adult entertainer who recently filed a civil lawsuit against Combs, accusing him of orchestrating freak-off parties where she was allegedly forced to perform sexual acts with guests, according to the lawsuit. English, who claims to have worked for Combs for five years, said that the 45th president attended at least one of those notorious parties as she saw him. She claims she was initially paid to perform, but found out or found herself being forced to have unwanted sexual encounters at several of these high-profile gatherings held in exclusive venues like the Hamptons. Combs' white parties were legendary for attracting A-list celebrities, politicians, and even members of the clergy. In an interview with the Daily Mail, English, 46 years of age, says she was frequently saw, she frequently saw prominent figures in attendance. Quote, I saw Busta Rhymes there. This shit just got dark. Apparently, A-list celebrities are paying off the victims so they're not named in this lawsuit. Which means some of the super rich people involved in this are probably gonna get away with it. This is all coming from Diddy's lawyer. This clearly has some level of effect because 120 people have avoided public exposure thanks to the hush money. And once again, if that's the case, there's a whole bunch of people that probably was involved with the situation that we're never going to hear about. And it's definitely the guys that got a whole bunch of money to make people not talk. And I don't know about y'all, but that's kind of disappointing to me. Because everybody needs to go down, bruh. There needs to be a complete restructure of how the industry operates. That's not going to happen if the same people that are doing these things get to go right back to work. And I hope that Diddy can stay alive during this whole process. Because with p diddy going down a whole bunch of the music industry is gonna go down with them he has to be able to speak first let's speak about the possibly existence of a tape that contains diddy having with another man and that man happens to be we don't know people are assuming it's justin bieber but we don't know but the new york post did post that an a-list star is being horrified as alleged diddy's tape gets pushed to the media outlets he feels like he was victimized years ago the male A-list celebrity who is a subject of an alleged tape with Sean Diddy Combs is horrified that the footage is being shopped around to media outlets. Both of their faces are clearly visible in the footage. Diddy was getting put by him or he was putting Diddy out. That's what is being alleged by the New York Post. I do think tapes exist. Are people bidded on them? For me, it's for what? You'll never be able to profit on those tapes. Those tapes are at some point going to be evidence that's going to be subpoenaed in a criminal trial. So why would you buy it, period? Now, people think this is Justin Bieber. I have to believe that Justin Bieber's sources wouldn't be talking to the New York Post. And if they actually even reasonably thought this was a thing, they would, they would start flying off lawsuits and cease and desist. It, it's hard for me to even believe that it's Justin Bieber on this tape with Diddy. 
I've seen a lot of people try to include Sean Carter in this. Uh, that's Jay Z. I have heard that. Hey, listen. Number one, Jay Z is well aware of these threats. When I mean threats, um, threats of litigation, in a civil sense, by people who have accused him of being around or indulging or being compliant or complicit with certain things. I have heard that allegedly the reason why we ain't see no lawsuit with the name Sean Carter is allegedly because he has settled. I don't know how many. I don't know what. And from from what I was told, what Diddy failed to do, Jay is smarter with and Jay has been proactive in doing. So rather than play chicken with these people and say, I, well, sue me then, he has handled some of these cases. Now, I don't know if these cases are all cases of misconduct. It could be somebody who said, yo, I got injured at your spot. Who knows? But from what I've heard, if you're wondering why we keep hearing Jay-Z's name, but we haven't seen his name in any, in, in any paperwork or court documents, I've heard that Jay-Z is handling some of these situations but allegedly he's fielding these situations in a way where you won't see anything of course i'll just say it's a rumor jay-z has allegedly paid a seven-figure sum to not be mentioned and keep his identity private in the diddy case it has recently been revealed that several big celebrities have paid out huge sums of money to keep their identities hidden it has been reported that the same celebrities also attempted to help diddy cover up his crimes this comes after diddy was arrested and charged with crimes against women with many of the alleged crimes happening at his parties fans have been speculating about which celebrities were involved and many are disgusted that they have paid to keep their identities private it has been speculated by fans that one of these celebrities was jay-z some fans said they were disappointed in jay-z they think he should be supporting the victims and using his platform to speak out against diddy's alleged actions they think it seems like he's more concerned with protecting his own image other fans defended jay-z they said he has a right to protect his reputation and shouldn't be judged without all the facts they think he might be innocent and doesn't want to be associated with the scandal some fans said they were sad to see another celebrity involved in a controversy like this. They hope the truth comes out and justice is served for the victims. And now, a source has spoken up and said Jay-Z is indeed one of these people who paid a settlement. In their statement, a source said Jay-Z is allegedly one of the people who has paid his way to not be mentioned. Millions involved in this. He does not want his name to come up in anything. Jay-Z is clearly worried about what Diddy might reveal about him and is seemingly doing everything he can to keep his name out of the case. One fan said it's disheartening to see someone like Jay-Z who is often seen as a role model, potentially involved in something like this. It makes you wonder who you can trust. Another fan said, This whole situation is a reminder that even the biggest celebrities are human and capable of making mistakes. It's important to remember that everyone deserves a fair trial before we pass judgment. For this video's comment question, do you think Jay-Z should speak out about these allegations? Allegedly, Diddy's flesh fests would begin after his famous white parties, which would attract major celebrities such as Leonardo DiCaprio and Mariah carry. However, after the A-listers left, Diddy would put on a completely different show for a select group of friends. Michael Kaplan of the New York Post, who broke details on Freak Offs, reported that Diddy would lure in women whom he was personally managing or had met at various adult clubs, along with sex workers. Using either drugs, money, or power over their career, Diddy forced the women to participate. Afterwards, to ensure their silence, he would use video footage taken at the events as blackmail leverage or simply threaten to ruin their career. But Freak Offs had other surprises of their own. According to a well-placed drug dealer who was invited to one of these events, male rappers would engage in acts with each other as well, including some very high-profile and well-known talent whose names have not come to the spotlight yet. In a, in a field like, like hip-hop, which is very, very it's homophobic. School. It's the greatest. It's the greatest gay market in the world. Do you think that there'll ever be an out-of-the-closet gay it's rapper? It's owned. The, the hip-hop community is most likely owned by gay, to be honest but, with but you. But do you think there'll be an They're owned the by closet. gay. They're, I happen to think there's a gay mafia in hip-hop. Right. Not rappers, you right. know, the editorial presidents of magazines. Sure. The, the, the PDs at radio stations, the, the, the people who give you award at award shows, the this, this is the fucking gay mafia, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? They are in power. This shit just got dark.
Apparently, A-list celebrities are paying off the victims so they're not named in this lawsuit. Which means some of the super rich people involved in this are probably going to get away with it. This is all coming from Diddy's lawyer. This clearly has some level of effect because 120 people have avoided public exposure thanks to the hush money. And once again, if that's the case, there's a whole bunch of people that probably was involved with the situation that we're never going to hear about. And it's definitely the guys that got a whole bunch of money to make people not talk. And I don't know about y'all, but that's kind of disappointing to me. Because everybody needs to go down, bruh. There needs to be a complete restructure of how the industry operates. That's not going to happen if the same people that are doing these things get to go right back to work. And I hope that Diddy can stay alive during this whole process. Because with P. Diddy going down, a whole bunch of the music industry is going to go down with them. He has to be able to speak first. You mess with Obama, the feds come for you. P. Diddy had dirt on everybody. That's why he was allowed to operate for so long. People were scared of him. P. Diddy was a billionaire. P. Diddy was bullying people. He literally had people killed. He messed with a lot of people, but all those people were below him. They couldn't touch him until he with the wrong guy. And that wrong guy is Barack Hussein Obama, <laughs> who's born on the 4th, became president of the United States and is the shadow president for even longer than that. He had Barack Obama on tape, big no-no. Do not mess with Barack Obama. I just had a question. I'm just trying to tell all these young cats out that's trying to come up, you know, like, where do you think they gotta go to? From your point of view, you know what I'm saying? What is the best advice you could give them? Cause I be telling them, like my best advice is they gotta do it they a whole new way, a different way, like, like like they from another planet. But coming from you, coming from the man of of, of men right now, tell them something, tell them something good. I mean, first of all, you want to stay away from these diddy bopping motherfuckers. You motherfuckers dancing all on the motherfucking stage and shit. They want your ass. You call them astronauts. So be afraid. Be very afraid. You really ain't built for the game. Or uh, something. Something. Something don't, like that. Don't be trying to be famous. Like you gonna run into a motherfucker like that. 